So I would like to start this conversation with, please help us understand what LPA is. You found it high on my blood. That was shocking. Mm -hmm. And when I read about it, I was like, there's no lifestyle cure for this. Right. And I and it and it freaked me out. Yeah. And it makes me wonder how many people out there are walking around with high LPA and they have no idea that they're, you know, one moment away from a heart attack. So right. talk a little bit about why this is such a pivotal marker. It, it's such a great question f from for your audience to really understand what LPA little LP little A is. Yeah. And the reason is is this is something relatively new in medicine that we've mm now have a renewed focus on. And so, you know, the problem with medicine is us doctors, we got trained 20, 30 years ago in medical mm. school and no one's even talking about LP little mm. a. And then we kind of fa move forward in our lives and see patients. And it's really not in the forefront of our mind to even check for this because it's so new. And so I'm so glad that you're bringing it up on your podcast because everyone needs to get checked for LP little yeah. a. LP little a is a protein marker of cholesterol that is particularly bad f for you because it can, it is number one, like you said, is lifestyle resistance. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how clean your diet is. It doesn't matter how much you're exercising. It can still have negative effects. And the way I like to describe it is also particularly very sticky. So what happens with LP little a cholesterol is that it can stick to not just the inside of your arteries of your heart, which mm -hmm. leads to plaque that causes heart disease, but also to your valves, also to the arteries of your neck that supply your brain that can cause a stroke. So this is a particularly bad form of high cholesterol. And here's the clincher to it is we're also used to looking at a cholesterol panel, which mm -hmm. is LDL, HDL, sometimes VLDL, it completely misses LP little a. And the reason for that is that LP little a doesn't fall into one of those buckets. Right. So another idea that people should get their head wrapped around is measuring ApoB. Okay. ApoB is a cholesterol marker that is a combination of all of the bad, I'm putting in quotes, bad mm -hmm. cholesterol, LDL, VLDL, and LPA. Okay. And so if your ApoB is high, it's catching, number one, potentially LP little a, but also it's telling you an overall status of how much of the bad cholesterol you have roaming around in your body. I want to be very clear, too, because, you know, a bunch of people are going to jump down the common throat of us yeah, when we yeah. talk about, oh, well, cholesterol doesn't mean you're going to have heart disease. Right. And those people are absolutely right is not just high cholesterol that causes heart disease. You have to have a combination of factors, including metabolic disease, mm. inflammation, high blood pressure. All these things work in concert to cause plaque in your arteries. Okay. However, LP little a is particularly bad as well because even in people that don't have metabolic disease or high blood pressure, it can still cause plaque. Yeah, And so it's that's crazy. why measuring LP little a is so important. About 15 to 20 percent of people have a high LP little a and they have yep. no idea. Yeah. So it's interesting because my friend TJ, who died of a heart yep. attack, they when they did an autopsy because he was only 54 years old, they found that he had a fibrotic valve. Oh. And they called it, his dad died of something similar. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know exactly why his dad died. So there, so is there a familial genetic connection here? Absolutely. Okay. And everyone that I've seen with a high LP little a, there's always stories like what you're mentioning of someone in the family that died way too young with a heart attack or a stroke or a valve issue. Right. And, you know, unfortunately... Just in general, heart attacks, 50% of people don't even know they have heart disease until their first heart attack, right, and 50% yeah. of those are fatal. So wow. people get diagnosed way too late way. with heart disease. Wow. So another important fact for all your audiences is to know this, that they need to be more proactive in asking their doctors to be more proactive in getting some of these yeah. blood biomarkers done. So that, therein lies a big problem mm -hmm. um, because and, – and in bringing this to my audience, one of my concerns was I don't want to freak everybody exactly. out. I want to create resources. So make sure those of you listening, we're going to at the end really talk about some of these resources. But it brings up a really interesting question that I deal with a lot with my following is that people are not heard in their doctor's office. Mm -hmm. And so if they walk in and they're like, hey, I heard this podcast. 
I'm wondering if I should have LP, do you call it LP little a? LP little a, yeah. AP, LP little a checked. Doctors don't like to be told what to, to test for. And if it's that new, they may not even know anything about it. Is there any kind of advice we can give to the listeners on how do you talk to your doctor about testing this? Absolutely. They could even, if they do have a family history of heart disease, they could say, I'm at risk because I have a family history of heart disease. I'd like to be checked for this. And most doctors will probably say, okay, well, let's just check it, right? Right. I think maybe 70, 80% of doctors will will check it. And this is what I'm hearing, you know, when I yeah. when I, I do a lot of these podcasts and people tell me, oh, my doctor actually checked it. He didn't fight me on it. Oh, wow. And he got educated. Now he's checking it on all of his patients. Amazing. So that's, that's really good news to see, you know, the mindset shifting. However, if they're not going to check it on you, most people are seeing the doctor through their insurance. Mm-hmm. Just look at other doctors in your area that mm. your insurance will cover right. and go to somebody else right. and have them check it. You really want to have a relationship with your doctor where you can challenge them, where you can bring them information and they will consider it and they will, you know, if it's a blood test, that's a very simple blood test. Every insurance company should be paying for it. They should order it for you, you know, if it's something that you're concerned about. And so, you know, I'm very encouraged now to see more and more doctors are having less of a patriarchal kind of relationship with their patient. Great. I'm so encouraged to hear that. Me too. And I'm I'm seeing this a lot. And, you know, I'm very happy to kind of see doctors working with their patients. Agreed. Instead of telling them this is what you need, you know, and and not even listening. I think that, you know, one of my favorite books that I ever read was by William Davis, and it was a book called Undoctored. Mm. And it came out like 10 years ago. And he, I actually interviewed William on this podcast, and he told me he got so many challenges on this book. Like the profession came after him. And in the book, he talked about in this day and age, because we can Google search all this stuff, we can look up all these science articles, we can listen to to conversations like this, that doctors need to be aware that they have a more educated patient coming in to their office and that they should be working together with them. And so I talk about this a lot on all my platforms. And one of the most common questions I get is, well, how do I talk to my doctor? Because there's a level of I'm better than you, and that's the way a lot of doctors have been trained. But is there anything else we can do to create better rapport with our doctors? Yeah, you know, I think another thing that you can do is you can get blood tests on your own now. So there's yes. some new laws passed. Not that's even They're true. not even new anymore. And now LabCorp and Quest, you can basically go on their website Find what you want to order, yeah. and you can order a lot of blood tests on your own. Yes. And so that's really great, too. And you can yes. bring in some of these blood tests. You'll have okay. to pay cash for it, unfortunately. Right. But you have to, you can bring in these blood tests to your doctor. And I think a lot of doctors will appreciate you taking a proactive. There's also a company called Function Health that can do over 100, I think 200 biomarkers on Amazing. you for $500. Amazing. I mean, it's it's this stuff is available now. Yeah. And it's so... It's so incredible to see people actually yeah. wanting to know their own data, right? I know. It's really, it's really fun. 